Catherine, this protest movement definitely not dying down. It seems Netanyahu has been losing support as this war drags on. That's right. This population, um, this protest movement, excuse me, is growing, it seems. Now, protests have been happening regularly every Saturday in Israel pretty much since October the 7th. Um, families of uh, people held hostage in Gaza or killed on October the 7th have been gathering. But there's been a, ch a marked change in tone since October. There's a large protest going on in the center of Tel Aviv um, where protesters are calling on Netanyahu to step down and for early elections to be held in Israel, growing frustration uh, with his leadership and the direction of his war. Um, there is also There are also protests elsewhere in Israel, in the northern city of Haifa, small protests here in Jerusalem and outside the prime minister's residence in Caesarea, which is uh, north of Tel Aviv. There you've got some hostages families um, who've been staging a sit-in, not for the first time outside uh, the Prime Minister's home. Uh, and this really reflects a growing frustration. People saying that as this war goes on, they do not feel that it is bringing them any closer to getting their loved ones home. 106 days now into this war, and many people openly questioning the direction in which this conflict is going and saying that Israel uh, needs to change direction. And meanwhile, Catherine Netanyahu is also facing mounting pressure from his closest ally. Can you tell us about the latest exchanges between Netanyahu and U.S. President Joe Biden? Yes, this back and forth between Netanyahu and Biden is continuing. Um, it, but Netanyahu has basically indirectly defied Biden again this Saturday. The prime minister's office putting out a rare statement on the Shabbat, um, basically reacting to Biden's comments uh, saying uh, that a two-state solution of some type could be possible while well, Netanyahu is in power. He was reacting, of course, to those remarks just a few days ago by Netanyahu, where he rejected the idea of a Palestinian state. So in this rare statement uh, today on the Shabbat, Netanyahu's office um, said that Israel must retain security control of Gaza after this conflict has ended and that that would be at odds with the idea of Palestinian sovereignty. So an indirect um, slapdown, if you like, following Biden's remarks and clearly the relations getting more and more strained. The, the two leaders spoke on the phone um, very recently, but that was for the first time in nearly a month. They hadn't talked since December the 23rd. So at the moment, the Biden administration um, trying to push Israel towards um, some kind of ceasefire, some kind of deal, some kind of uh, path towards an eventual two-state solution. But Netanyahu remaining defiant.